The thing's bit well missed. <laughs> You know, he hates when we go down that route, but we all subscribe to the theory that the Mac Pro is ticking on... <laughs> and if he was here, he would bash every single one of us like, Stop it! The Mac Pro is not going to die. That's an Intel thing, not an Apple thing. He would say it to each and every one of us. <laughs> I know he's busy, so we shouldn't be picking on him. I, I just... Let's pick it on him, because he's busy. <laughs> <laughs> we, not, he, he knows we're going to do it good fun. I, I, I know. Well, and, and, and we know he's still around, because he is tweeting. I swear, the next time he comes back, we should just say hello, Tweety. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's hard to, you can always find him on Twitter, but if you try and get a hold of him by other means. <laughs> well, you could always go, go uh, seeing how some people are too busy with work, but not busy, but enough free time to tweet. <laughs> well, no, if you, if you, but, for, okay, the, the, those of you who, like, that you should follow his Twitter, you know, twitter.com slash MrBit10. It's clear from the sporadicness and the diversity of his tweets, he's like in the middle of something and he notices something and he takes like 30 seconds to tweet it and moves on. <laughs> it's, I know. it's not, it's, so it's, and it's just, it's whatever the heck happens to be in front of him at that particular nanosecond. <laughs> so it kind of goes all over the place. <laughs> Uh, I know, I follow him on Twitter, and I just enjoy picking the app dedication. I mean, it's, it's good tech fun. You know? Oh, I, I know. It, it, it's funny to watch, like, some of the back and forth he has with people on there sometimes. <laughs> no, you're wrong. <laughs> like, Okay, uh, for those of you who are wondering why we're thought, it, we're going into, this is really, really old news at this point, but as I'm sure everybody knows, but nobody knows exactly how. Or what, or under what license, or anything. Yeah, it, it, WebOS is going to go open source. Which will either be great, and give WebOS this, you know, ungodly new life, and come sometime in 2013, there will be as many WebOS devices as there are Android devices, and it will be a strong third contender, and it might even put Google back in check with some of the things they've been doing about, you know, putting terms on when you can and can't use the marketplace if WebOS is smart and doesn't create issues like that. But on the other hand, it's Hewlett Packard. <laughs> it can also be the death knell of. Yeah, if they if they license it incorrectly, or they use a bad open source license, which basically creates a conflict with, oh, well, because it's because it's using this license, you basically must give away your soul to do anything with WebOS, and, uh, <laughs> and there are. There, so there, having a list will be Apache, right? Uh, I think that the rumor is they're going to go with something like that, but that's just a rumor at this point. We don't actually know that. It, it, it's it's the one it's suggested Hewlett Packard follow in the footsteps of Apache when they for the licensing for WebOS. Whether or not HP will listen to the industry, internet, blog, and million other stories advice <laughs> who knows who knows well, uh, she's doing a good job you know <laughs> and then she's fixing some screw ups I won't lie uh, 
Yes, but it, keep in mind, the person who we're talking know, about I, is I, Meg Whitman. I, I know who it is, but I will give, I give credit where it is due. <laughs> but it's Meg Whitman. <laughs> I, again, I still say the credit is due to fixing a lot of screw-ups that the last you know, who kicked his ass out of, um, <laughs> she's fixing. Keep, keeping the PSG group was a good move because why? It still earns a shit ton of money for Hewlett Packard. Open sourcing, level S, we'll see how that goes. If done properly, it could be a great move. I think personally, if it's done right, and I know a lot of Linux users have been wanting a truly quote unquote open platform, that not this pseudo sort of open platform like Android, WebOS could be that thing. But it depends on the, because uh, if I remember correctly, the UI is proprietary, but the core is not. Yeah. So it, well, and the other thing that's going to be a that's going to be a, a touching point here is the software itself is going open source, but Hewlett Packard has made it clear they are going to retain full and complete sole authority over any and all patents associated with it. Well, that's gonna be tough, but they control for that. Yeah. Well, well, it. it, it, it it, it, the, see, depending how the licensing goes, you could be in a situation where for using WebOS, Hewlett-Packard could sue you. Uh, I don't think they would be dumb enough to do that, but it also creates the situation like you've had with Android, where the person who has the patents that can defend you isn't going to back you or allow you use of them. So... <laughs> It, it, I, I think that's one of the things that needs to be addressed. I understand them wanting to retain ownership of them, not wanting to give them away with the licensing, but there needs to be some kind of agreement or clause in there for dealing with the things pertaining to the platform that the patents cover. Like a patent license. Yeah. And, and a fair one. That's like black and white, okay, this is when you cross the line, you know? And so the, ex the the protection the patents offer extends to the OEMs and ODMs that choose to use the platform to protect them from patent trolls. I wish they could put them in the, I wish they could put them in the patent pool that Android has, you know? Well, no. Yeah, what, uh, what he means is that like certain patents that IBM has given and extend it to the community for a lot of their open source projects. Those patents, when they're used in other things, IBM does not sue, does not, they just, they're there to protect that product, that code, whatever it be. And that's hopefully what HP does, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Because if that isn't done, it's DOA. Yeah, it's, some would say it's already DOA. Uh, now, if you ask Bit, yeah, I'm gonna say, and, and Bit's not alone. There are enough. <laughs> I, I, honestly, if like I said, if this is done properly, this could be that strong third contender that we've been wanting to kick both iOS and Android off their complacency butt and say, "Oh, you all thought the innovation wave was over. Time for round two. <laughs> mixed feelings on that. I see the things that people like Bit talk about. It's better at multitasking. But there's aspects of the Android UI I prefer over the Web S one. But at the end of the day that's you know that's a point of view individual thing. It's like you say potato, I say potato, I prefer this card style system, I prefer this uh, slide 
uh, point system. It, it's just it's different people are going to prefer different ones, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nope. All right, want to talk about this other baby? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can go off on that one if you want. <laughs> okay, Ben, this is Commodore's doing, not mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, blame me. Send all your email to me. I'm pretty sure you know my email. <laughs> Go ahead, call me. Go, go ahead, call me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, uh, I hate to be there about you. Is, uh, no, I know me. I like to. But um, I'm pretty sure that Apple's going to discontinue the Mac Pro this year. <laughs> you know, because uh, they discontinued the, you know, the MacBooks. You know, they, they're going to discontinue, you know, they only discontinued the XServe and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure they're going to discontinue their only machine that is designed to be thrown away. <laughs> Anybody want in on this? <laughs> they, like, you know, a lot of Apple blogs say this, like, um, Apple Insider, you know. <laughs> All I can say is, Commodore, you're poking the bear. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say, I, I don't back things into a, cor into a corner and then poke at them. That's the good <laughs> <laughs> I I will say that I think, uh, all I'm going to say on this is I think Apple, if uh, if if they do this, they're gonna shoot themselves in the foot for the niche market that the MacBook Pro, uh, sorry, not the MacBooks, uh, for the Mac Pros are catered to. There will be nothing to fill that niche. Well, and on that, that I, we we were talking and, about that. It, it's yeah, and, and but you know what I mean. There's nothing on that particular side of computing that will replace that integrated software stack that they are looking for, you know, that final cut, and, you know, everything is all nice and pretty or whatever. Um, there's not going to be anything to replace that. You know, you can stick a Windows box in there and throw, you know, Adobe Premiere, you know, CS5 on there. It's still not going to do what that workflow that all these you, graphics. you know personally if I was in a place and that happened to me and we were doing that before I would stick Windows and Premiere in there and hang myself to something that doesn't quite do the job I need it to given the fact that I already have all these Linux box laying around in Sonic Sonic, I would hire somebody like Bit say Bit we need software that does that how much Okay, make it run over here. <laughs> My guess is software developers are going to be paid very, very well for about two to three years if Apple does that. You basically make those solutions available now. <laughs> but that, that's the only thing I see. I see Apple really shooting themselves in the foot with that crazy, you know, they push... Yeah, but they only care about iOS. Like, they, they make 30% of everything on iOS. Well, no, but what I'm saying, though, is if they get rid of that enthusiast market that they have, that has been yeah, loyal... I'm that, pretty sure that they have their foot already in the door with the consumers. Like, oh, yeah. It, it's not about the consumers, though. It's about catering to a core market, too. I've already discussed this before. In the part of well, no, you keep a core audience, you keep, you know, those core real people, and you try to bring in the other people to that core business. Well, that's how they started out with, though, but, you know. Yeah, just, well, and the, uh, the other thing is, um, it, it, as far as for Apple as a company, the reality is, uh, how we got back on Apple, I don't know. Uh, it's, um, uh, uh, but, um, their core user base is is two core user bases. And the people who for pretty much keep Apple profitable and afloat are the Apple subculture, the Apple fans. Uh, I prefer to call some of them fanboys or fantards. But there's two classes of these. There's the people who got into Apple because they were sophisticated geeky power users and at the time Apple was offering pro solutions that were better 
And they're holding on to those days. A Apple has been moving away from that for a while. Then yeah. there's the other group of this they bought the Apple marketing of it's better, it's shinier, it's thinner. The new Britney Spears CD. See, he's here with us in spirit. <laughs> You know, you know, you know what he means when he says that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, the new iPhone app, you know, and it's like, oh, what about the new Mac Pro? Oh, who gives a shit about that? Uh, and it, it basically, this culture is having a little bit of a e -e 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 at it. <laughs> it's, we'd go yeah. deeper into that if if Bit was with us, because Bit is our expert on that particular culture. But uh, he's not. <laughs> Being the Mac user out of the group, <laughs> and he has valid reasons for wanting to use a Mac. It's like, <laughs> he, I'm not, I don't know why, but there are valid reasons for using a Mac. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, but but we can't help but notice, and and he's very adamant about WebOS. <laughs> so it, this is why we know he has a brain and he has some common sense, and he, uh, <laughs> and, he and, and, and honestly. Uh, I, I, you know what? The next time Bet's here, we're gonna go into more detail in this because I'm sure he's getting steamed if he's watching this part. He's like, <laughs> he's, I can just, I can see him getting like annoyed. He's like, well, I, I, he's, he's probably not mad, but I can see him like getting, he's like, he's having, he's having things he wants to say, <laughs> but. The, Th that that is part of why we have we're having the viewpoint we have of because he is that other core user base and he had you know he didn't choose iOS he chose WebOS and I think that's one of the reasons and that's why we're drawing the conclusion we are that Apple may be considering just completely moving away from that because they've realized they're losing them. And they don't want to invest any more energy in them. And, and bit, uh, all I can say is boxy. <laughs> yes, yes, boxy. <laughs> you know what? The next time you're here, bit, you can just lead the way and tell us why we're all wrong. <laughs> yeah, make it all like that. Well, no, bit. Remember. Commodore poked the bear. Yeah, yeah. And we took the bait. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. We didn't take the bait. We said hypothetically if. Big difference. Commodore is guaranteeing they're going to discontinue it. They are. I know. They are. See? Yeah. <laughs> we're saying, we're saying if Commie's hypothetical man. world occurs. <laughs> Okay, uh, and on that particular note, before we really put our foot in our mouth, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and tailor this part off. <laughs> we're getting used to the new format. Give us time. <laughs> you guys press the buttons down below. Yeah, yes, buttons, buttons. There's two of them. Like, dislike, and there's plenty of comments. I'm sure we'll get some from Bet when he watches, if he does. <laughs>